So today the main goal of this video is actually help you master CSS3. So I'm going to teach this in, uh, in having the mindset of a beginner and also an, an advanced CSS person. So, so what we're going to do is I'll try to explain every details on the screen for you to understand, taking my time and coding step by step. Okay. With that, let's get started. So let's say you're a new beginner and then you just see this Visual Studio code on the screen. So how to get this is very simple. You just go to google.com, very simple. Just type google.com and you type in VS code. Very simple, VS code, enter, and you're gonna see the first one on the screen. And then you have to select between your option. I use Mac, so I downloaded the Mac version. You can download any version of your choice. Okay, so let me close this real quick. So this is what we're gonna do for today. So we're gonna create a simple, responsible UI, which has the main, you know, main ways of applying CSS to any HTML code or uh, JSX or whatever thing you can apply CSS to. So uh, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to have menus and then we have a main section and then we'll start this really quick. All right. So let's get started. First, let's go to our VS code. Now, let's say you have your VS code download. Uh, you can go to this side and do open. Well, I just want to open this and then create a new folder here. So let me create this folder. Let me keep it simple. So a, a folder named CSS3, then create. So then I go open. So inside the folder, I'm going to create another folder here. And this folder, I want to call it CSS3. You can give it any name. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to keep it CSS. OK, so inside it, I'll have a file inside the folder and then make sure you click on the folder before you select this one so uh i'll name this styles you can give it any name it doesn't matter style.css so css then i click enter so outside the folder i want to create another file which is an html file so index let me do index.html HTML. good so now we have two files one file is here and I have the style inside the CSS folder. So we have these two files here. Great. So what we want to do, the first step we want to do is to have our skeleton, which is the HTML code. So how do we do that? We can simply generate our HTML skeleton code by using the exclamation sign. Then it gives us this. So for first, we're going to target the uh the navigation section of what i just showed you so uh let me increase the font a little bit oh sorry so i'm using uh i'm using mac so i'm gonna use the command plus plus to increase the font a little bit yeah let me decrease it i think it's too big so you can really see it well okay so inside inside our body we can create all our html files here but not not forgetting this let me add the title to this let's call it uh master css css3 okay and let me also add which is our css style i wanted to actually apply to our html here so i'm gonna add it real quick so we use the link tag and we close it in the link tag, we need to have what we call the reference, the reference link. So it's called a ref, R-E-L. Then we have a star in here, it means we are referring to the star sheet. Okay, great. So next, we need to actually refer to the link. We use what we call the hyper reference with the href. So and in this one we'll simply refer to this file so how do we do that we you just have to start typing css then it brings the folder you click on it and then it brings the file great you save that and now we have our starship included in our html file so let's start creating a simple html uh, tabs in here first we need a header 
and uh, this header is where we're gonna have our navigation bar so I'll, I'll quickly add the nav bar here and uh, inside the nav bar that is where we're gonna have the names of our menu so first we need to have our a tag and uh, a tag here and inside the a tag we'll have what we call the span tag so span tag in here very simple so our first menu for our project i'm gonna name it google and for now we have the google we can repeat this one several times so but uh, let me keep this simple here and then i'm gonna add a font i want us to have a font for this project so i'm going to add a font to this from uh, fonts.google.com then we're also gonna add uh we're gonna add some icons to our menu so let me reference all this in our code then we continue with the html so first let's go to um, let's go to our browser and then type in fonts.google.com so it will take you to this page here we have so many fonts you can look through but uh, i'm very familiar with one which is called the real way yes so this one i select you can browse through to get whatever font you want then we go to get font so when we go to get font or uh, we're gonna go to embed site and for the embed site it is very simple so we have this one we have this one we can use inside our link okay okay so now we have one two three four okay so we will use almost everything here we will use almost everything here so let's go get and then embed okay now we have our this link we have to copy the one here let's just copy this one then we go to the top of our CSS make sure we place it at the top so we have our font style link to our project let me see okay we have 100 to 900 which is fine okay then next what I want us to do is to add our fonts that are some so this one what 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 we gonna do is to add some icons to our menu so in order to get that we have what we call the cdnjs cdnjs it's a, a database for you know finding a whole bunch of stuff like fonts and other icons and all that so since we want to use uh, font awesome we're, we're gonna click here and then uh select that url that I just picked and then we're gonna place that right below the google fonts we already have in our project so but uh let me go back sorry i need to add a link here we have the link in here then we need to use our uh, ref that's a ref and this is also a star so we have a star sheet here then we're gonna have our href and for the href that is where we paste that link there so the link I just copied from this site which is this one yeah so we, we copied it from here and this is gonna help us add icons to our menu so since we pick from here we have the the link to the font awesome here and then we click on it very easy that is where we're gonna grab most of our icon from this site and it's totally free so you can always use it in any of your projects
good so here first we have google so for google let me type google in here we need to find some nice icon mm, let me use this yeah we can use the first one but uh i like the google plus rather so then here you make sure it's on html we have a react view and svg so make sure you have it in html then we copy now we go to a project here and then we add it right before our a tag here let me see let me see okay let's do that in here so we open the first a tag then we paste what we just copied from that page so i have this one in here okay then i have the span span there so let me see Make sure you clear this one off. Good. So now I have make sure we have the other no sorry. Good. What what I'm gonna do is to add what we call a reference id we're gonna add this because we're gonna have uh, this menu referencing to our container we'll be creating later on so you you i will explain further when we get to that as well so i'm gonna add an id here and then i'll name it with the same menu which is google great so we have a, a tag here we need to close this one great okay so we have this set now we have href here then we have a google plus icon in here then this is closing this one here then we have a spawn tag in here perfect so what i'm gonna do is to just duplicate this for other menus we're gonna have so we have one two three four mm, let's create five yes exactly what we have so all this we can change this to suit the menu we have if probably you're doing something like home content as it's gonna be the same format so let's do this is uh, Facebook here so Facebook and uh, we're gonna type the same Facebook in here so Facebook good so what we have to do is to find another icon for Facebook on this site so let's do Facebook Facebook okay let's use the first one so, then I copy copy go to the second one and then make sure you are replacing it exactly with the uh, no start from the icon tag here so great so I paste that one in then the next one let's do Yahoo here so so yahoo goes to this menu here great and uh, let's find an icon for yahoo so let me go here and then push yahoo inside so we have this coming up so let's select this and copy and then we go to the yahoo section so make sure you are replacing it with the i tag okay so i got yahoo fixed there and then the next one let's do tiktok tiktok so tiktok and i replace tiktok with the one here good let's go find some tiktok icon here to make our menu really nice so tiktok enter okay i got this one 
so let me copy and then uh, go to the page so for TikTok replace it with the eye tag okay now the last one let's add snapchat here snapchat okay so for snapchat let's replace it here as well and then uh, let me go grab an icon for snapchat real quick so snapchat okay mm, let's choose this one and uh, we go to the next one okay let's replace the icon tag and we have snapchat in here okay so so far let's see what we've been doing on the screen yeah uh let's see so our folder here is css3 then let's open okay so perfect so we have this one going on here we have the icon we just copied from the font awesome uh, our website which is this and then this is the one we were actually let me show you here real quick so the google here the facebook the yahoo the TikTok here and these icons are by its side so these are the icons by its side and these are the names we have in here great so it looks like we are on course now we have this dummy page here what we want to do here is to but don't forget okay we have this one fixed don't forget we need to have class or id in order to target all these ones in our css so what we have to do is to first start with a, a class a class in here and let's call this header then let me have another class which will be tag uh, targeting our nav our navbar so a class here let's call this navbar very easy to remember it's good to have a proper naming you know naming format in your code good so now let's step into our css great what we have to do in our css is to apply style to all elements oh, let me close this what we have to know is uh anytime you start a raw html it has its own default styling that is why we have this displaying like this so it's a default styling but in order to be able to have a master control over the whole page and then start from zero and then you know control all the canvas by ourselves we it's always good to have what we call the default styling for ourselves and we use the we use the star and uh, we're gonna have this in here okay so let's first uh add a font here so a font we can easily get it from where we got the embedded place so here we can just copy this we want to you know change our whole project how it looks like and then have our own font you know affect all these so first let's have the font pasted in I just copy it from the google font site and then here so it's gonna be real way and then we have the sans sans phrase so next is we need to have a margin so we setting our margin to zero for the entire page so let's set our margin to zero then let's set our pattern to zero two so pattern to zero here and then what we're gonna do is to solve the box sizing problem on the page so box sizing and here we'll have let's use the border box okay so why do we have to do this 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 is to avoid the box model issue and make sure the width of the container we provide does not get stretched if you add another margin and padding to what to your code so so this one will help us set everything to normal so that anytime we add margin and padding in our code it doesn't act, add extra spaces to our content that is why we we take care of this box sizing okay now let's go to the 
let's zero out our outline to none so there's no outline for any of our content then unless we want to apply it to it then let's also um, take care of our border that one will also be none and then the next one is to look at our test decoration so as you can see the default css for our page has decorated our test for us even though we didn't write any css so let's remove that and then have a, a good control of what we're doing so let's call the text decoration and then we add none okay next is to look at uh i want us to capitalize our, our test in here so if we have google let's have the first gene to be capitalized facebook the first one to be capitalized how do we do that we need to call the property of text transformation so let me use tra test transform and then we call capitalize we can use italic in others but now let's solve this overflow issue so we are setting all the default stuff to zero then we can start doing our own css styling then the overflow we take it to hiding and then let's solve our scroll the scroll behavior for our page we want to set it to smooth so great so this is what we use to reset our canvas for what we're doing i mean you can have another way of you know adding more you know styling to it if you want it but for example the scrolling would happen uh when we have our page scrolling we want it to be very smooth that is why we ignore the default one and then attach this to it so it depends on what project you are working on and how you want it to go so let me save this real quick okay so as you can see what we just did has zero out everything and then normalize it to what we actually want so uh, this is looking great now now we can have an upper hands on styling our own way good so we've taken the underline and all that great now since we have our class here header we're gonna use our css to target this header in order to control how we want it to look on our page so first let's have our header being targeted and what we have to do is since it's a class we start with a dot if this side is an id like this ID like this here it's gonna start with an ID let's say hash so since it's a class we're gonna use the dot okay so let me change it back to class okay great so I go to the CSS back and then we're gonna target our header header dot header open and close braces then in here we have to first look at uh, the margin for our page and then and then we also need to look at uh, the top and left to right of the whole you know menu we have so first let me start with um, with adding a top a top of zero so for a header here the top of zero at the top here because we are we are targeting this whole this whole container here good so specifically for our header then let me add um, let's do a left of zero as well so we have a left of zero then we have a, a right of the menu for our header also set to zero okay why I'm doing this because we're gonna target the nav bar itself and then we want the style we, we're going to apply to the nav bar 
be very specific and accurate for us. So now let's have, um, let me add this position fix. So, so that anytime we finish with the container, our, our menu will be fixed. It will not be scrolling along with what we're doing. So let me go position fixed. Okay, great. So we have a position fix. So what would this, this will make the menu fix if we scroll down. So this one, if we scroll, if we have content here and we scroll, the menu should stay fixed. It should not scroll along with it. Yeah, we're gonna see the typical example when we, we are getting done with it. So let me save this for now. Now let's target our, our header. So in here, we're now gonna target, no, let's target the navbar, good. So I copy the navbar ID here. And first we need to narrow down our target. So we'll start with, with the nav dot header. No, the header, then we go dot navbar. Okay, because we, we're targeting the navbar inside the header. That is why we have it this way. Then let me do this. Okay. So inside our header, inside our header, let me set our tests. Uh, our tests are display to flex. So display flex will give you the flexibility in order to move things around easily. So we have this property called a display and now we add the flex. Okay, so we have this one targeted and we have had some flexibility in here in this container. So we targeted the header, which is the matter of appearance class. Then we had the child class in here and then we set everything here to flex, which means it's going to float and then we're going to uh, control it with another tag which is targeting the a tag here okay so let's see we, what we get so far okay so all have been set to zero no not too much changes good so next let's go uh, copy this and then since we're gonna target the a tag so i will add the a tag right here a space and the a tag there so that's the anchor tag. And with our A tag, let's see. So A tag is for all the menu. So whatever we do, we we'll apply to it. We we'll apply to the menu we have there. So for our A tag, let's use flex in here. So this property will help us have our A tag be having equal spacing in the whole row so that is why we're gonna use this flex so flex then we'll set the flex to let me say let me set it to one yeah let me set this to one then i have all our tests display in the middle so we have our test align we're gonna align it to center okay Let's see what happens on that screen. So, good. So, the flex we used there, I set it to flex one, and we already targeted the container in order to have the whole display flexible. Means this one makes this place a whole flexible. Now we target it and we say, let's do flex one. It means it's going to space this equally. On at the top and then we are centering the whole thing in the middle instead to be at the corner here so let's add more style into it and uh, let's see what happens so we have the center now let's increase the font size the font size looks a little bit small let's increase this a little bit so we use the font size property here and uh, let me set this to 20 pixels great next 
what I have to do here is to add a line height to this. So the, the line height to our test. So let me use uh, 65 pixels here. And let's see what we get. Okay. So we have the space in here. We have a font increased, which is great. It looks great on the screen now. Now let's look at this. Uh, I want us to change the color a little bit. Yeah. So to change the color, we need to use simple. No, no color. It's color. Color. And uh, let's see. Mm, let's try the Alice Blue is the first on the list. Let's try that one. You see, mm, okay. Alice Blue looks hidden. Okay, let me leave that one out, but uh, I'm gonna add other colors to it. No, let me either use a filter for it, a filter for it. So, because we want to add a hoovering kind of property to this, this a little bit blur, but uh, I'm go we're going to fix that real soon. We're going to add some colors to this, and the colors will help this come out really well. So, first, what we have to do is to add a hoover, and to do that is very simple. In, in in the CSS, we need to copy the same thing we have here since we just wanna oh. Since we just wanna add a hoover to it, we have the same thing. But what we we'll add to it is just adding a column here, and then a hoover keyword here, like this. Simple. Let me close this one. Okay, so. For uh, Hoover, we're gonna add a little bit of a property called the filter. And uh, the filter would to help us control the brightness of how uh, Hoover looks like. So let's use uh, 0 0.8. We have, we can use the one you want. So let me see. Okay, now we have the, the Kezar chain to icon here which is great so now anytime we hover over it our our mouse instead to use the arrow it changes to what the person's finger which is great so we have a hover in place now we're gonna apply a different background color to each of this so this will have different color different color all throughout so let's get to that so to add that, what we have to do is to uh, is to first copy the same thing here, and then we paste it here. Good. But since we're gonna apply this to each of the menu, like Google is a separate menu, we have this separate, we have that separate, and we have that. But all of them is a tag, which is which is very easy to do. So since it's an A tag inside a nav bar, we use this CSS way to do that. So we're gonna have this attached to our Hoover. Instead of the Hoover, I'll clear the Hoover and then add what we call the nth, the nth property. So the nth, then we have a child means we can have many child inside the same what the same nav bar or, or the same enclosed stack so we'll call this to be the first child the second the third the fourth and then the fifth so very easy to apply styling to each of these child so we'll say the first anchor tag which is a tag which is this google we're gonna use what we call the child and then the child number what one inside here very great so and very easy to understand so here what we want to do is to apply a color to each of the menu so let's add that by simply adding what we call the background 
and the background will be the color so let me see which color should we use i think we should use uh should use anything really um, let me see color yeah i just did this to help her select the color so coral let's choose this for the first one yeah yeah let's see this so let's look at what we have so far okay great so we have a google menu coming out real nice so the color i chose also looks really nice so we keep that then uh, next we're gonna go to the next child now i targeted the child one now let's target child two three four and five let's do it so it's just simple copy and paste this and then change the number of the child so two then what color should we use uh let me see probably a light light green if you do yeah let me choose this real quick you can choose any color of your choice yeah great so we have our facebook coming out real quick and uh next let's go to our third child and let's choose any color for it so here um, what color do you think we should do probably we should do a pink or a red let me see um, let's select anything in here no let's do it right here right great then we have a fourth chart so a fourth chart mm, let's do a blue here great let's refresh oh we have snapchat snapchat so let's add another color for our fit child so it comes out really well so fit child what color what color mm. yeah, let's do in between this one yeah let's do something this yeah you can just select any color of your choice here now you get a concept so now we have uh we have the snapchat here we have the google facebook and yahoo tiktok okay great so our menu is really looking good now so now what we have to do is to look at designing the body right so we have this but uh, we don't have anything showing up here we want to create this section which is a whole container for each of the menu so anytime we click on each of this it takes us to its own container or its own page here so let's do that but before that we need to create uh, a div for this to have our info here so after the header let me have a wider space here after the header let me have a div here to split and so we have a and inside the div we're gonna have uh sections but first let me add a class here and this class let's call it uh container yes container good and inside the container we're gonna have sections and these sections are simply gonna be hooked up to this menu menu ids we have here so that was the reason we we're having the ids here so let's do that real quick so we have the section okay so in this section we're gonna have just a simple test in here so let's say Google here okay then in this section we will have the ID this ID needs to be correspondent to each of the menu we have up there so 
the name here which is the id hashtag we have here needs to be the same name for this id so anytime we click on this it takes us to this page here which is the section we have here okay good so if that one is clear let's continue now we want to have a, a class for this and this class will probably be applied to all the sections because all of them are going to look similar so we're going to call this the main section main section main section great and i'm going to do this real quick gonna duplicate this one two three four okay so one two three four five we have five menus so let's duplicate this real quick so we have google here which is good i'm gonna have facebook in here it should be the same because it's gonna hook up to it so the name should be oh, no should be the same so we have a phase no we have yahoo here then we have a tiktok here then we have a snapchat here okay no snapchat yahoo tiktok snapchat oh must have something here facebook so we have google facebook yahoo TikTok. Oh, look at this one. Okay, so let's say Google here. This is Facebook here. Facebook here. Then we'll have Yahoo here. Yahoo here. Then we'll have TikTok here. Mm, TikTok here. Then we'll have Snapchat. Snapchat here. Okay, great one two three four five great okay so five one two three four five great okay so once again this id hookups to this menu and that hookups to that menu that 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 okay great so now that we have our id set for a section and our class set for a section let's see what we have on the screen okay so we have everything, you know, showing here. So, I mean, we got to style this because we can we can see what's actually happening here. So let's go to our style sheet. We have our content displaying just like that on the canvas. So now we have to target first. We need to target the container which is this one is our main matter what div so for that section so let's do a class container container and for our container we need to add a display flex like we did at the top so we can control it with really well so have the flex here and then uh, let's add a width to it so the whole width of our of our container let's add a uh, 500 yeah let's say 500 percent of the page and then we will want to add a height and for a height let's add a hundred VH so this hundred VH will occupy all visible screen height so since we have a width here a width from here to there the height will be here so the height if we use the VH it means any visible space here should be covered with that hundred hundred we have here so visible height in a visible screen should use this so it's going to cover all and then the width is going to use the 500 percent of the page anytime in the browser okay so next 
is uh let me save this let's see what we got okay everything just got missing okay so let's look at the let's start this so we have our content display real well in there so let's first target the main section for each of this side and the main section is for all the pages because we already have our id here so it's gonna hook up to each of the sections good so first let's have let's copy this and then target the container and then target our next class which is the main section side so the main section side is here this one so we target this and then we drill down to that okay so first let's add a display flex and uh, we have a flex here good next let me see let me see what we got here okay so we got nothing showing let's add a width here Mm. a width of for uh, let's say 20 percent and then let's have a height for our section so this height let's use a hundred percent for the height then uh, we want the items to show on the screen so let me do a line items and then we place that in the center okay so let's see okay so finally we have facebook showing here okay great so we have our google showing up here and then our yahoo and then a tiktok okay looks great so far so since we have the flex and then we have the width set, set to 20 percent and the height 200 percent inside our main section and we already know our ids have been hooked up to each of these pages already that is the real use of this href referencing to an id down here great then we have all our items here in the center so we are on a good course next is we need to justify our content at least it needs to align the content uh, the content horizontally in the center so here let me add that to it so we have uh, mm, justify content let's do let's do uh, no let's do center justify content in the center and then let me see what we got now okay great so we justified it in the center uh, everything looks great now okay uh let's let's add increase the font size a little bit so the font size for no let's do font size and for the font size let's do 8 vw for that so this one will be the size of the total view width so size of the total view width for our page so size of the total view width will be what just eight the total view width for our font so this looks good yeah TikTok here snapchat here facebook here yes great now we want to add uh, letter spacing so 
we want to space out have some spaces in here so we space out a little bit so that we need to use what we call the letter spacing which is easy to use and then we'll add uh, 0 0.5 let's do 0 0.5 rem and this will space our letters for us so okay great so spacing looks great yeah good the next one we have to do is to let me see uh, I, I don't like the this is a lower case let's convert all our content in the section to uppercase so we can do that in the CSS uh, so we're gonna use a text transform and the text transform let's do uppercase yep. uh, let's see what happens okay great this one looks good Facebook Yahoo good and now let's check the font width how the font looks on the screen the, the weight of it it looks you know thin so let's add bold to this now as we see it's not really bold so let me reload okay yes this looks really good so this makes it bold and uh, let's see let's add let's change the color a little bit so let's use azure for this let's see okay great it is good now because we're gonna why I use the Azure for it you know it looks a little bit faint because because of the white background so you cannot actually see the black there but what we'll do is we're gonna apply this same colors to every section so it's gonna pull these ones out really clear when we have a solid background so now we keep it like this on a white background now let's try to add some background color to each of the pages so it, it comes out really good so first we're gonna use the same trick we use here since we have the same classes here same class same class same class we're gonna use the same trick we use for the anchor tag here so let me copy this here this here and we drill down so what I'm gonna do is to add the nth to this so nth, and then we have nth child so our first main section will be one let me close this then we can add the color to it then we'll use the background color and this background color i want us to use the same colors we have for our menu so the first one will be this this color so let me apply that to this one let's check it out let's reload great this looks good so we have this coming out really well because if I use the Azure it gives the color of white to our content and then white really appears well in different color backgrounds because this is white on white it doesn't really come so well so we're gonna add the same color to it and all of them is gonna come out well this looks great okay so now let me just copy and paste this one two three so we have one two three four okay this last one five okay let me give some spacing so simply copy those color to the background so it has the same coloring for each of the menu second then we're gonna have this one one two three okay then 
we're gonna have this And then we're gonna have the last one. But don't forget to change the numbers, otherwise they'll all be one color. So two, child three, child four, and child five. Great. Now let me see, okay. Oh no, let me reload first. So command R, great. So we have it here, we have that here, and we have that one here too. So this looks really great so far. So let me see. This looks great. So this is what we really want to do here but after we are done with this let me check how the responsiveness looks okay this the responsiveness does not really look good yeah that's not really look good But it looks great when it's open wider, but when it's pulled to this side, it doesn't look great. I mean, anytime you develop in a web, you want to make sure at least it's a little bit responsive or fully responsive so it can work really well on each devices. So normally if you want to keep your page responsive, you need to add what we call the media query. and to add this media query is very simple It's by using the gauge of every screen size in order to you know manipulate what we have on screen so to use a media query you need to use at then you call media so media query here simply means it's gonna help you adjust the pages on each screen sizes really well good so first we can have a max width at which the media query should apply to when it's being squeezed so the max width normally i know we we can simply do it when it's at 750 pixels so you can you can look on more about screen sizing and uh, you can find so many ways of using this media query but uh, the simplest way is to do this and then we need to make sure our displays are none anytime it is really small we can hide some of our you know some of the displays we have here maybe probably remove these ones and display only the icons or if you want this ones the contest to show remove the icons with when it's squeezed to a 750 pixel line so let's see what we can do here let's target uh let's target the header first because the header is the one causing the problem so we target the header and then we target the nav bar in there so that it, it aligns properly the nav bar and then we target the a tag and then we target the span inside the a tag so this one we targeted what the header with the media query and then the nav bar inside here we drill down to the anchor tag then we will drill down to the span tag all right so we we are looking at the icon showing instead of this content showing when it, it is really squeezed the space you know the screen is squeezed or being open on a smaller device so let's do the display for this how it should display in the 750 pixels should be none none means it's gonna hide everything okay so let me add a 
Let me add a simple comment here. So he said what? Hide the tests on the menu. And open and open on the smaller devices. The smaller device great okay so let's check it out good so on a 750 pixels it hides the tests and the content like this you open it and close open it and close so this really looks good all right so this is the easiest way to learn css and to manipulate this I recommend you to always code along when you watch tutorials so that you can actually get the basics as you do it as well. But to continue learning what we just studied, it is very easy. You can learn more of how to master the CSS. Now you have the fundamental. You can master how to, uh, you know, you know, add other element from CSS and to understand any css line you see or you want to add to your code by just typing in css in google and i will recommend you check w3 schools which is really good also to help you learn more and then there's another great one here which is uh mozilla firefox here so i mean you can go to reference and then css so this will take you to the explanation of all the CSS stuff you want to use and it will take you to the selectors we did some of them there and then you can learn the extras here if you found value in this video I would like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also like and all that so going through this will give you more idea of how to apply the ones i did not cover in this video to it's really going to help you cover all that so if you have any questions leave it down below and i'm going to get back to you as soon as possible if there's any help you need for your css or anything just leave it down there and i'm going to reply back to you as soon as possible all right peace i'm out